On the show, we feature Bernice Besson. You might remember me from my TV shows in the 1980s and 90s. And now I host a show featuring some of the most inspiring and inspirational people. Welcome to Magical People. Bernice Bisson is a psychic, medium, and astrologer in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. She has more than 30 years' experience sharing her gifts and is also a seasoned practitioner in numerology, tarot, palm, tea leaf, crystal grid, and flame readings. She's also an avid paranormal researcher and spirit-seeking event host. And we're back. I'm very excited to introduce you all in case you've been living under a rock and have never met or seen her before from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, one of my uh, favorite places next to my home city, Montreal, Montreal, and Winnipeg. They're right up there on so many levels. Bernice Bisson. How are you this day, Bernice? I'm pretty super duper. I'm excited to be on your show and uh, and to be able to talk about magic and what I do and the magic you do. And so I'm I'm here. I'm here. Awesome. I'm so thankful. Let me say right off the top. I'm so um, thankful that you've agreed to come on the show. Um, everyone is special who comes on my show, but I've just been more fortunate to, <laughs> to draw really special people to the show. And, you know, the fact that you've even agreed, I'm very grateful for. So thank you for that. I, I love your bio. I'm going to share this with everybody. You sent me this and I was overwhelmed in a good way because I thought you're everything and more that I was kind of anticipating because I did a little bit of research some years ago. We have someone in common and I thought, oh, let me let me check. I'm curious what's going on here. And it's like, hopefully one day, Bernice will come on my show, and here you are. So you're involved in so many things. Um, a lot of people watching this will be lay people, what I call lay people. They're neither magicians, nor have they maybe been um, exposed, if you will, to the psychic realm, what I call the psychic realm. Uh, but you are a psychic, a medium, an astrologer. Uh, you do numerology, tarot. I call it tarot to sound good, but it's tarot. Uh, tarot, palm, tea leaf, crystal grid. I know what that is. That's very exciting. But in case people don't know what that is, we'll discuss it. And flame readings, very exciting as well. So, oh, and also, which really excites me, a paranormal researcher and spirit-seeking event host. And I know what that's about, and I think I know where you do that, and I really want to expand on that as well. So okay. I'm going to throw it to you in a second. I made some notes um, because I don't want to miss anything. Do you want to start what happened when you were around 11 uh, where do you want to go? I'm going to kind of throw it over to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And I, I am very honored to even be able to share my story. I grew up in a very deeply religious um, area of Manitoba, a very French Catholic area. And I, I never was exposed to nothing but the Holy Ghost at church. I got to tell you. <laughs> and I um I wound up having a journey where I wound up in foster care. And I, I spent many years in my childhood. Um, I moved. I was just like a little rolling stone. So I moved quite a bit. And around, um, I had different encounters as a child, even in grade three and four. And I didn't have the language for what a psychic was. I thought I could conjure weather. I thought I could um, read adults' minds and I could hear voices and I could hear babies crying and I could hear people talking 
And I would go looking for them. And I remember in grade three and four, um, I was at Shamrock School in Winnipeg and I found this um, spell book uh, in the library. And I was like, oh my, what is this? What is this? I got caught with it. And I got in huge trouble, by the way. Um, well, you know, the, the, the not, uh, it, it was, it was taboo in some, some weird way. And I, but I thought I found a language. I was like, oh my gosh, this means something. And I remember going ghost hunting with my little friends. And then I was never allowed to hang out with them later because they were all scared later. <laughs> we were looking for all the ghosts I kept hearing in their house. And so as a kid, it was it was kind of magical for me. And I really just thought it, I can control nature. That's what I thought. And I would make potions. I would gather and I can control nature. And it wasn't until I was about 11. And my mom's friend's mom, this little old Métis lady uh, who chain smoked cigarettes, <laughs> and she would um, take blue ribbon tea, loose tea, and throw it into the cup and pour the water and it tastes terrible and they would sit around and have, have, you know of all the things tea leaf reading was okay and I was I was mesmerized I was like you're telling me you you can see stories in this cup and so she wouldn't read my cup and I was so heartbroken because I was just I was waiting just like a little kid just waiting for my cup to be read and she's and and she looked in the cup she's ah I can't read this but I'll show you and so instead, she just showed me a timeline. She says, here's the timeline in the cup. This is what it looks like. This is how you know your directions. This is how. And I was like. And so I that was it. Tea leaf reading was my thing. And, and any opportunity I would get to kind of do that. And it wasn't until um, I would say it was around 16, I saw a tarot deck. <laughs> that what's that and um and then i was just sort of introduced my my grandmother was very much into numerology she was very much into the numbers numbers meant um they were like a universal language of energy and that they measured everything and to always pay attention and so um as i got older i was able to develop a close relationship with my mom and uh, and my siblings, as we all got back together as a family, which was really important in claiming even my my name, Bisson, because it's my birth name. And I, I wear it proudly because I didn't have a big connection. And so it was important to me. And so my journey has brought me to places that I, I felt I was supposed to change the world. I felt I was supposed to. And so my work for a long time really led me to, I worked in um, environments that dealt with issues stemming from murdered and missing women and children. And so I worked in, in really trauma-based environments for many, many, many years. I taught in prisons. I taught with the University of Winnipeg. I taught business and economics. <laughs> I can say that. I'm boring that way, but um, I wanted to really give opportunities for women and people struggling with violence and connecting them to the economy so they could not continue that cycle, you know? And so at any rate, so, so my career was, um, and even in reading, I've reading for 35 years, I always kind of read on the side and I opened a shop. And so I was like, one day I'm going to retire and I'm just going to read up my shop. That's it. It was a tea and crystal shop because I tea leaf read and I love crystals. My whole room's full of them. <laughs> Hence the crystal grids. I read crystal grids and I make them for you and I move your energy with these beautiful stones. And I had my shop. For many years, and it was kind of well-known soul medicine psychic shop in Winnipeg. And um, I had 11 other psychics that we were like a little dirty dozen psychics and healers and practitioners, because I'm very much about working in collectives and cooperatives. And I, I don't believe in hierarchy. I believe in sort of communal. So I'm, I'm not, I'm that kind of business economics person. <laughs> That's very left of that. And, and <clears throat> I had the shop that we, I had 11 other psychics and 
I would read there, we'd all have three psychics on a day and people can walk in and they can get their palm read or their tea leaves read and buy some crystals. And, and it was a real healing place. Soul medicine was a real healing place um, uh, for, for people who came in there. And sometimes they just come in and test out the tea, sip a tea and, and figure out uh, and, and talk. And so it was, it was, it was a pretty magical place. And it was not just over here on Provence the French Quarter in St. Boniface uh, for many years. And I'm back on Provence. My studio is on Provence. So I'm still in the French Quarter, kind of where, um, and the irony, little irony, the shop I read from and owned for many years um, is now um, New Bothwell Cheese. And ironically, my papere was the cheese maker at New Bothwell Cheese for like 30 years. So I was like, ah, I'm, it was all meant to be anyway. And so here I am. And I read for my studio and I, I read for people all over the world. And I read, I, I've traveled all over the world. I've palm read through India. I've read people all through Europe. Like I, I, um, the U.S. I have lots of clients in the U.S. And, and I, um, I, I think in all my years in this journey um, has brought me to sort of recognize that as this little girl, I didn't even know what a psychic was. So when people say, oh, I knew when I was four, I'm like, I didn't even know what a psychic was, except I thought I could read your mind as a kid. And I realize now after 35 years of reading and all my readings have been recorded, I insist, I insist. And I've read, my gift is clairvoyance. I see things that haven't happened in great detail. I, my gift is remote viewing. I see things in other places in great detail. Uh, my gift um, around mediumship is I call them like my paparazzi. And they follow me everywhere. I don't know who the heck they are sometimes because they don't belong to me. And it took me a really, <clears throat> excuse me, a really long time to understand that part. I thought I was haunted. I thought I was hearing voices and I was haunted <clears throat> and I was spinning and spinning my wheels trying to find the meaning of all these messages. And I realized, wait a minute. And this is how I discovered that. I started automatic writing about 20 years ago, 24 years ago, where I just started writing what they were telling me. And it was crazy stuff. It was like, sorry, names of people. I'm like, I don't know who this is. And I started writing it. And I would wait until I would receive a trigger, like a name or a person. And I'd be like, wait a minute do you know Robert? And they'd be like, yeah, that's my dad. And I'd be like, tch, 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 tch. this is the message that he showed up with yesterday. And he said, da, da, da. And they're like, oh my gosh, how did you know that? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how I knew that. Except for it, it started with a lot of anxiety and they, they started telling me things. And that anxiety, if I sat in it and made myself really kind of uncomfortable leaning in it, th that vibration would, and then it would just start flowing, flowing, flowing. And I, I couldn't write fast enough all the, the paparazzi pictures they were showing me. And sometimes it's a name, it's letters, it's things, it's a place. It's, and I, I just start writing. And I, I had discovered through this process my mediumship skills because I just, I just didn't know who these voices were. And I realized they belonged to who I was going to run into. And I realized in spirit really set some pretty clear boundaries for me as a psychic. And first of all, I will never approach you. You will never get me. I will never go up to you and go, oh, your mom's telling me. I never do that. You have to pick me. And I'm never allowed to tell you what I do for a living. If I'm in a public setting and I'm out at a party, I can't tell you what I do for a living. You have to pick me. It's kind of a rule. And I have one social media page. So if you're expecting exciting social media lady, it's not me. I have one Facebook page called Bernice Be So Psychic. I post all my good ghosty stuff there. My footage from when I do ghost hunts, like spirit seeking. And when I host seances, which I'll talk about, everything's recorded. And I post my stuff that we capture, things that kind of come there for discussion. Um, otherwise I, um, I just, I read, I just now just read from my little studio and I do the medium work. It picks me and 
if you came to see me for reading my studio, I've already written notes about your name. I don't book any of my own appointments, all your book. So I have a lady. Her name is Lori. And she's the most fantastic gift I've ever met. She's uh, living in the United States somewhere right now. And I never see her. And she does all my bookings, does everything. And she, I just show up and read. I get a list of names and their phone number in case they don't show up. First name and a phone number, and that's it. I only work with the first name. Um, even when I do radio, and I've done radio for about 15 years, I do both uh, like on iHeartRadio, kind of different syndicated, and I've done uh, local radio here on a particular station here, FM station on 99.1 for like six years. I did a two-hour kind of call in. I love that live reading. I work just with your name and or just your birthday, just day and month of your birthday because I'm an astrologer and I work with and I I message with. And it doesn't really matter um, whether you believe or not. It doesn't really matter if you want your palms red or cards red or your tea leaves red or you just want me to message. Or um, I, I kind of just roll with it and allow the messaging. I do. I message either way. And deceased people will tell me things and I'll see them and I'll. For me, any storyboard, whether it's astrology, which I find the most predictive, working with your natal chart out of everything, uh, or your tea leaves, um, to me, they're just a timeline. They're just a storyboard. So if I see, oh, there's this baby boy and he's he's going to have a heart condition, he seems to show up around September, maybe within two years that day like that. So I, I use them sort of as those timelines and I work with people to help them find their timeline and where they are in their timeline and uh and so that's that's kind of that's my style of reading so it's a lot i mean we can we could pull in and keep going with that and um but um just to go back to and i do love skeptics because you have to be skeptic to you have to question now when we talk about for instance people crossing over um, in all my medium work that I've done, there's a few things. Oh, my gosh. They have told me to turn around. If you're going to cross over and you see the light, turn around and look what's behind you from the light. Um, it's the universe. And you can choose if you cross over to come back here. Um, in this reality that we know is our carbon-based meat bag, as our humanness. Um, but your God molecule soul, your soul, um, that vibration, um, you can also turn around and you can stay in that universal sovereign. And so there's different things that they've shown me that's freaked me out a bit because I grew up in hard Catholic ideology, which <clears throat> I was like, I really had to shed a lot of my and break a lot of my belief systems um, and um, my own skepticisms because I, I, you have to understand, I, they tell me a lot about people. And in fact, I have journals and journals and journals of stuff of people I haven't met yet. And they turn out to be claimed messages of people I meet, which it's, so in a seance, for instance, and I use Dr. Hamilton's format, uh, when we talked about Hamilton House, I use Dr. Hamilton's format for a seance. And I actually, I, as a medium, I also, when I talk about spirit seeking events, or I talk about, <clears throat> I'm a physical medium. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, what does that mean? Well, this is what it means. <clears throat> Things move. Lights turn on, off. I so, and if I were to conduct a seance with you, we do it in silence because they heard everything you thought. And in fact, they'll answer your thoughts. So my goal in seance, I call myself the facilitator. And I get everyone on the same thought of who. And as we bring in, I have four flashlights in a room and they'll go on and off and answer us. I have, <clears throat> I do some old school stuff. I'm pretty old school. And even my ghost hunting. So 
I have lots of ghost hunting equipment, K2 meters and voice spirit boxes, and which some of those premises came from Dr. Hamilton, in fact, which I'll come back to. But <clears throat> I use dowsing rods. I'm a dowsing rods person. I'm a pendulum person. I I do table tipping. I have a little wooden table and that table gallops across the room. It spins. It. Um, I... Um, I do my own sort of form of spirit table and I have a glass on a table and the glass will move as it answers. And I just use cards and it knocks my cards off the table. And that's as we message. I'm never allowed on the table. Spirits told me I can only be the facilitator at the table. And so I stand in the background and I message and I, I help guide the group thought about who they're bringing in and what they're asking in their mind because they can't verbalize it Um, because we can't have anyone influenced and everyone so it all has to be recorded and so I do events like that Um, I'm and I I also so in a seance style I do it like that I do um, seance in the very same room Dr. Hamilton conducted his seances between the 20 1920 (laughs) in that house and I use his similar format and all of his seance documents and photos are well documented at the University of Manitoba archives. And we have access. And so here's some irony about Hamilton house and how I wound up there. COVID hit and I had to move locations because where I was at the restrictions, nobody could be in the same place. Anyway, I was sitting at my table and I heard a man's voice say, call Emma. Emma was the agent on the board at Hamilton House selling the house. And I'm like, call her. So I called her. I said, hey, would you guys rent a space in Hamilton House for a couple of months? I know you're selling it. You know, I'll just rent it for a bit. Yeah, I had to rent it in 24 hours. I was like, well, that worked out better than I thought. And so I read there all summer and I was like, okay, Dr. Hamilton, thank you, thank you, thank you. Please come and tell me what you would like me to do. And so there's four other entities in that home that I'm supposed to greet and that we have to work through um, as we do other events there. So I fast forward. I'm in my studio. Emma, the agent, has an appointment with me. Well, she's 15 minutes late. Sorry, Emma, I'm outing you. but. 15 minutes late and distraught. And so we sit in the session and because she was late, I ran late. And my very next client comes up and it's my other client. And we go through her session and she's distraught because she owns a really popular Halloween store, spirit store in Winnipeg. Well, Gags Unlimited. I'm going to give her a little plug. Gags Unlimited. And she's looking for a place. And she's like, and I'm like, you two crossed in the doorway. You two need to talk while she bought the house. She bought Hamilton House. Gags Unlimited is there. Like that. They tried six different buyers and nobody was going to buy the house. She got the house. She got her store in there. I now do events. I br- we bring in other mediums. We have some brilliant mediums that and, and psychics that work with me and, and her in that house. Uh, I do just these seance events and I do these little Zodiac kind of birthday gatherings again, astrology, uh, but we've had some incredible experiences in that house, even in um, just one example. So Gags Unlimited. So she invested in lots of ghost hunting equipment and we had it all set up and we were just there. We have, I have a very private seance circle. That's just four of us, super gifted. And I only, when I do my own personal seances, this is my little circle. And we were at, Cheryl is one of them. So we were at her Hamilton house and we were using a spirit box. Spirit so we box. could hear the spirit box going off. And yeah, it spits out a bunch of whatever. So, you know, they, they can mine your phones. They can, I mean, who knows, right? Except for, remember, we do it in silence. And so my one of my people says, oh yeah, you're in the room what's her name meaning what's my name and out of the spirit box bernice and i was like what did you ask because i asked your name and so 
that was the beginning of sort of all this really deep started. We had the opportunity to kind of work in this house, which I just felt so, so pleased about because uh, not only Dr. Hamilton, but Dr. Nielsen was also, uh, she was a home, a surgeon who became a homeopathic doctor, just like Dr. Hamilton was a surgeon who became the leading paranormal researcher. This house is very magical. And Dr. Uh, Dr. Nielsen was a beautiful homeopath, lovely human being who had um, worked there for many years and really brought um, the spirit of light into that place, really brought the spirit of light into that place. Um, and so it, it, this, it has, um, it, I don't want to say haunted energy. It has very spiritual energy in Hamilton house and Dr. Hamilton has shown up in our seances and, and his wife, um, and one of his sons, two of his sons, the older one, and the one who died very young in the pandemic, the, the 1919 flu pandemic. So we've had different um, pieces come up. Um, I'm usually the automatic writer. I So what I like to do, remember, if I'm on the table, this is why I don't go on the tables or at, this is why, is because all my, so my ma, my mom up here, my mom interrupts every single time. She, my grandma, they hit the, and they're like, we're here. I'm like, I know you're here, ma. <laughs> that was not the time. <laughs> and so, so I'm just here to message, right? I'm just, and so I like to go and I like to be in another room away from the group. <clears throat> and I automatic write everything going on in the room, everything going on in the room, everything going on to record. <clears throat> and then we match up right and try to authenticate and so we have different practices like that but i like the old school table tipping i work with a very gifted medium as well who does the transcendence box uh, if we go back where she'll be in this wooden cabinet and she takes on the likeness of the spirit that we've we've asked to guide through and so we we've certainly um we have experimented with different ways. We're very targeted and focused about who we're bringing in. This isn't just, oh, grandma, come talk to me. <laughs> no. We're, Dr. Hamilton is someone we've really wanted to channel very much. So to ask about his work, his experience, and him crossing over. And you mentioned Houdini earlier in our conversation. And I think he was at that house, if I'm not mistaken, or that he certainly... Uh, and that might be in the archives, Winston Churchill. There have been some some pretty heavy hitters that had come to this house to participate in that. Uh, and in that. Um, and what's been ironic is ever since I was a little girl, like a little girl, I had seen that house when I was like six. My mom took me to a place kind of two doors down. And I was like, I'm going to be in that house one day. I'm going to be in that house one day. I don't know why, because I didn't even know what it was. And I it had sort of called me. Um, since awesome. awesome. Uh, yeah, the, this whole genre, especially of, of ghosts and spirits, totally fascinates me. It resonates for me uh, for a number of reasons that we spoke about off um, off camera, if you will. And I can't help but feel that uh, it's pretty obvious probably to us, but maybe not so to um, our viewers. You're, you've got a very special connection with Dr. Hamilton, and and hence that was all meant to be. You were you were meant to work out of there. Um, um, Gags Unlimited, which I have uh, a huge connection to. I don't know if you knew this or not, but the original owner, Kerry Hogan, and I were best buds, and he had me involved with it at the very beginning. I designed their original logo with the clown and and the balloons on the side of the van and. Uh, he used it on their awning. I understand in Osborne Village now that whole block is gone. Uh, yeah. I was a little sad about that. A friend, a mutual friend of mine contacted me and said, well, Gags is gone. And I said, well, they've been gone for a while. Physically, I believe they're on Regent or somewhere. And they're at Hamilton House. <laughs> exactly. So that that really kind of blows me away in a way because you've got this incredible house or they, they have this incredible house. Dr. Hamilton is obviously there assisting. And I believe, and this might sound woo woo to other people. I don't care. Um, 
you and he obviously had at least one past life together. I'm sure of that. Either you were his assistant, you were female and he was male. Um, and, and there was some connection there. And hence, he's come forth in this lifetime to guide you to do all the special work in that place. And I just love that the, the current owners of Gags Unlimited are based out of this incredible place. Um, when I come to visit and often for book signings, when I visit Winnipeg every few years, um, I, I'll have to make a point of visiting. I want to talk a little bit or more than a little bit about radio and i understand because it comes up on my facebook feed tuesdays it's yes. a call-in show i believe can you share with everybody uh how they can call in where you know just please yeah so i've done psychic radio for about 20 so off and on in different genres in winnipeg and and the station i'm on right now is they produce Moonstruck Radio, uh, Moonstruck TV, Moonstruck Radio. They do, they're on all the iHeart radio stations syndicated. It's called A1R Psychic Radio or Ask Radio. And uh, the producers are out of the U.S. I was on there for a few years. Uh, I finished in 2017 and then I was in on Winnipeg FM Radio for a number of years and now I'm back on on this um ask one psychic radio reading for people all over the world that call in and they have if you go to my Facebook page I have one Bernice be so psychic or my website Bernice be so psychic um you'll find the link to my radio show I'm on there uh Winnipeg time 2 30 p.m Tuesdays I call it psychic Tuesdays I talk a few minutes of astrology. Again, I find astrology the most predictive. I make global predictions around astrology. I make personal predictions for people on their astrology. I um, I do two live readings. I have a 30-minute show. And, uh, and it shows up in all kinds of psychic radio places, like Sirius and different places that they produce them. And I uh, I read two people that they pick. And so I never meet them. I have no idea about them. Everything is recorded because you can watch it later. And I work just their name or just what I'm seeing. I say, hey, roll the dice. Maybe they got a question. I And I, I try to answer as much as I can in a very short period of time. There's something about being Canadian and speaking really quickly. You can cram a lot in to a short period of time. And so I love radio because... I cold read, I never meet you, there's no influence, I can only hear your voice, or maybe you say, oh, my name's so-and-so, or you say, oh, my birthday is May 20th, and then I'm like, let's talk about that, and I just start flowing in that energy, and so um, I, uh, my, my goal's really been to, I, to have um, more of a local show, um, and I guess that's where you and I connect a lot because I love local TV and local local radio because I'm a Winnipegger. And I, um, I've i read here for 35 years. Everyone in this whole area knows me. <laughs> and I've, I've read thousands of people. So it's funny because I'll go to an event and 20 people are like, hey, B, hey, B. <laughs> so so I, I just, um, I don't do big events. You will not. I don't like to host events where people don't get readings. I don't. So I, you'll never find me in a hotel room with 300 people. It's not going to happen. I do very small, intimate events where I engage you and I bring you into my world. And if you're a skeptic, perfect. I'll bring you in and I'll have you participate and I'll have you be part of what we're doing. Even if it's an astrology event or a mediumship's messaging event, I try to get people engaged or a spirit seeking event. I do a lot of those. I bring people to very haunted locations and I guide them respectfully through the building, right? In a respectful, we don't want to upset everybody, all the spirits there. We want, you know, and so I work with people in those ways, but radio allows me to reach people and, and talk about and, and have them call in and things like that. And I find it very engaging. Um, I uh, I also have a podcast 
And the podcast experience for me came out of COVID because I was like, I was still doing radio. We, we figured out how to do it, Facebook lives and all that kind of stuff like they do. And so I have a podcast and I have about 33 episodes out of, so all of my readings have been recorded over 35 years. And I insist, in fact, I prefer if you, I, I don't actually like, so years ago, I used to have a tape deck and I, you'd bring your tape, <laughs> we'd put it in. Uh, now people do it on their phones, I insist, because uh, for a few reasons. Uh, one is you get to listen back to everything I predicted. Again, I'm a clairvoyant. I see things that haven't happened. I talk about events, people name, places, things that are going on, and you can listen back. Um, I do it as a record in its real moment because people aren't present often. When people are in a reading, there's a one hour appointment with me. It feels like 10 seconds. People are in their head a lot. And so I work to unpack them and bring them really present and open and flowing with me in my room. And then I start going in and um, pulling what I like strings of information that are showing up with them and uh, helping them move their energy, helping them. And, and so that appointments can take on a life of their own. I've seen some of the same people for 35 years. I don't know anything other than my reading. And they come back with their recordings. So I started my podcast and I was like, I'm going to bring people back with their recordings. And you're going to get to hear that original crazy predictions. And they're going to tell you everything that happened. And uh, there they were. People were coming forward with their recordings. And I got to tell you, I because I don't know what I don't know. I just made the predictions and you've recorded it. Maybe I'll see you. Maybe I won't. I have to trust 100% in what spirit said to me. Even if you're like, now, now, I'm like, nah, that's okay. I don't care. I'm like, that's okay. You recorded it. You, it's right there. And so let's fast yeah. forward. So people come back with their recordings and out of these episodes. So my editor, I use it sound off um, uh, producers. Excellent. I was very happy with them. Matt Cahill. Excellent, excellent, excellent. My editor um, is in the UK. I don't know. I never see her name's Claire. She's beautiful. And so I send her all my stuff and she makes this fantastic little show. But, you know, you can hear the voice talking to me on some of those recordings. <laughs> the first yeah. time I heard that, I yeah. cried. I cried. And it was one of my clients came with a tape. And she goes, you got to come to my car. You got to listen to this. She plops under tape. She goes, Shh. And we're like, and you can hear a woman's voice tell me what I'm about to say. And That's I true. was like, you, oh my. I, I'm, it, 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 it changed the game. It changed the game. I was like, I knew they weren't for me. I knew they weren't my people. I knew they belonged to other people. I just didn't know why. I'm like, what, what do you want from me? <laughs> right? And they said, don't worry, we'll send them to you. Don't worry. You don't have to look for them. Be there's just be there. Just be. Just be. Yes. I'm like, okay. Awesome. And, I want sorry. to reminisce a little bit, um, which is what a lot of us Easterners do. Um, just cause. And I don't know if this is after your time, before your time, or whatever. Okay. But I guess we'll soon find out. When I was living in Winnipeg from, uh, what year was it, 81 to 94, um, there was about three places that featured uh, readings of any kind. There was a really old one, I think from the 1920s on Portage Avenue. The name escapes me. Do you remember the name? They had several readers there. The Chocolate Shop. That's it. Very, yeah. very, famous, very famous place, yeah. actually went there because a, a very close friend of mine worked there for many years with, with a, a fella, another fella there who is, is quite well known in, in Winnipeg as well. This fella opened his own place on Lombard, I think it was. Um, and that would be around 1993. I don't know how long that lasted, but he opened it with a friend of his. And so there was those two, but there was also always an area that I, that always felt right to me, not just because Gags Unlimited was there, but I think it was called a tea cozy, but I could be wrong. It was up on the second yeah. floor in, um, in the village in Osborne village. 
And that was so cool. What a neat vibe, kind of an old English, beautiful silverware and, and yeah. all this. And uh, uh, again, I was there just for fun, not to do research or anything, but um, I was actually there twice. And um, the lady who was doing um, readings there came over and was very affable and stuff. And I was there with a female friend of mine. And right away, she was drawn to the female friends. So she did um, uh, a tea leaf reading. This was very, very interesting, uh, if not superficial. I tend to be superficial, but who cares? In any case, um, she saw in my friend's uh, reading, if you will, a blackbird. And that could mean a number of things. We're all, uh, as readers, we're kind of familiar with that. And then she kept on and she saw this uh, girl with horses and all this sort of thing. Um, my friend said nothing, not because she didn't want to tip her or rather give give away info, but she was kind of like in awe and, and silent, kind of looking. I, I knew her well enough to know that. Sure enough, no sooner than uh, a day later, I believe it was a day later, we're rehearsing. This girl was in my show. And she was a musician dressed as a clown. We were doing shows at the Planetarium Auditorium back then. And um, bang, we hear this bang against my screen door. Uh, by the way, I used to live on Lanark in, uh, I forget the area, what it's called now. the South End, Winnipeg. And um, River Heights, it's called River Heights. Whew. Uh, right now, Winnipeggers are throwing their arms up in disgust. Mike didn't remember. They're all yelling, it's River Heights. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it was, I opened up the door. There's a dead blackbird there. It had hit the thing. It's like, oh, prediction one. There was no symbology in, in the lady's reading. It was an actual prediction. And the, the female friend of mine, she had horses. Her, her parents had horses. They were on, you know, uh, I forget where they were from. So uh, I was already knowing all this because my mom was a medium. Maybe she was a small. No, I believe she was a medium. And she would speak to her dead parents and um, regularly. You know, so this is something I grew up with as being normal or maybe because we're a, few, a European extraction. I didn't know how to put it together. I just assumed, OK, we're European Jews. We can do psychic stuff. We're psychic. But no, of course, that wasn't um, the rule, if you will. And uh, um, so that's where I kind of get that from is my mom. But uh, my mom always knew stuff and not just because she was a mom. But she yeah. used, and she said, and she used to use the term, you're a maven, and, and it's an English word, but it's also a Yiddish word, meaning knowledgeable about people, like knowing people on a greater level, a deeper level. And that meant a lot to me. I didn't quite understand it because I was relatively young, but that, that meant a lot. And Winnipeg still means a lot. I've been out here on the wet, I mean, West Coast. Uh, for almost 30 years. And um, uh, what can I say? My hometown, Montreal, and Winnipeg, they're both my home. Uh, yeah. Culture, arts, just everything. They seem to be, and this is not meant to sound negative, but rather positive, they're kind of way ahead of the game on so many levels. Winnipeg and Montreal right up there. And uh, I'm just grateful to have had the experience of being a Montrealer and having lived in Winnipeg for 13 years, 13 cold years. It was so <laughs> cold, I saw a dog frozen to a fire hydrant once. Yeah, let's see. Anyway. <laughs> I, you know, I just... Come in the summertime. <laughs> but a lot of people, they, they, they go, what? Especially out here, they, you know, in any case. Um, Let's recap very briefly how folks can get in touch with you. If you haven't in, uh, gotten a reading from Bernice, do so. I think by now they'll, they'll get a good feel for you and they'll realize, oh. But also I realize who you're meant to connect with, you're meant to connect with. It's kind of like when I used to organize psychic readings, in um, uh, Coquitlam, which is a suburb of Vancouver. I did those for five years. I organized them after being part of them for many years. 
um, the right person goes to the right reader for them. Yep. And just period, because that reader, whether they realize it or not at the time, has a message for them, has something of great importance yeah. uh, to, to tell them. So we, we had a runestone reader, we had a psychometrist, uh, for those who don't know the term. Well, explain, what's a psychometrist? You know, Bea. Oh, I would, I would have an item of yours or the loved ones, and I would hold it and I would feel the vibration and messages and things that I feel, see, hear, sense while I'm holding that item. Exactly, exactly. So we had a couple of those. We, we had um, a person only specializing in mediumship. Just all these um, people that I was very fortunate to have uh, involved uh, with our uh, fair, such as it was for five years. And I'm just so thankful uh, to have met you and so thankful that you've agreed to this. Again, what's a website, URL, address, email? You can find me at BerniceBissonPsychic.com and you'll find my social media there. You'll find my radio there and you'll find my podcast there. And if you love good psychic stories where you get to hear the original readings, and people come back and talk about all their experience that came from those readings. You can capture those episodes at my pod, at my website. So BerniceBissonPsychic.com. Awesome. Awesome. At the very least, if you're mildly curious, go there and have a look. It feels really good. I, I have to say, Bernice, I'm not just saying that to be nice. Um, the website I, I had to go to this morning uh, just to make sure I knew what I was doing, you know, and, and fill in a bit of the notes here. But it just feels right. It feels light, um, but grounded, if, if you know what I mean. It, it feels to so. be... Um, I don't know. I, I had a sense of sky and clouds, and yet it's it's very informative as well. So at the very least, check out our website. You're on social media. I know that because I've seen you uh, recently on there. And uh, I've got nothing but gratitude um, for you having, you know, been a guest of mine this day. I'm hoping one day you'll come back and we'll maybe do a live stream. Uh, I'm toying with the idea and then folks can phone in from Facebook or, or whatever. I would love that. I would love that. That would be a, a wonderful, uh, a wonderful show. I think so too. It just plain feels right. So and if you can check out mine this Tuesday, if you want to see live readings. Awesome. Awesome. I'll look forward to that. And I know you will too out there. Thanks once again, Bernice, for visiting us this day. Thank you. And I want to thank all of you out there as well for joining us. We'll see you all really soon.